Hi, I'm Hannah. Most of you know me through my blog and YouTube channel as Hannah Mags, but officially I'm Hannah Michalak. In short, I'm 24 and a trained makeup artist living in London. I'm married to a spiffing gentleman named Stefan, we have a fat cat called Widgie, and we're expecting our first baby in a couple of months. I guess we'll start at the very beginning then. It all started on January the 18th, when I was born in a little seaside town in Devon called Torquay. My mum Jenny and my dad Derek weren't expecting me, and I decided to make my appearance feet first. My big sister Jo was eight when I was born and super excited to have a real life baby to play with. She even used to pretend I was hers. When I was very little, the four of us lived in a cul-de-sac called Rolly Road with our grumpy cat Sadie, who scratched me in the eye and left me with a tiny scar forever. We all used to walk the neighbor's dog Susie together. I was so teeny at the time, Susie was taller than me and I remember thinking that she was like a giant friendly wolf. When I was about four, my mum and dad started drifting apart and became more unhappy together, although of course I was far too young and oblivious to know at the time. My dad decided to remortgage the house. I still don't really know all the details, but all I know is that he lost a lot of my mum's money and we lost our house and ended up renting. My dad moved out when I was about five, and after that I never really had much of a relationship with him. My first day of school rolled around quickly, and I clung to my mum's leg and screamed. I was such a mummy's girl, I didn't really understand why she wanted me to stay there without her. She'd been a stay-at-home mum with me until I was old enough to go to school, so I was so used to it just being the two of us. When the teachers finally managed to prize me off her, I went and sat down next to a girl called Natasha and we instantly became friends. My five-year-old self was so adamant that her name was Matasha and I called her that for ages. Tasha and I were so naughty when we got together, we used to disappear into the bathroom at her parents' house while everyone was eating dinner and throw wet toilet roll out of the windows at passers-by, a game that never stopped being fun. When I was eight, my sister and I managed to convince my mum to add a dog to the family, so we drove to the country to pick up our new puppy, Liza. After my sister Jo moved out to the big smoke to go to university, it was just me, mum and Liza for a long while. Seeing as I was now pretty much an only child, Liza was a really great playmate for me. She was really like my best buddy. I'd love coming home to play with her every night. I used to tie her lead to my bike handlebars and ride around in circles on our driveway. And I'd teach her games like hide and seek and make her sleep in makeshift tents with me. We had hours of entertainment together. Mum, Liza and I used to go for long beach walks almost every single day after school. Sometimes we'd take a little picnic or get chips on the way. Sometimes if it was raining really badly in winter, we'd drive up to a cliff top that we nicknamed Granny Lookout and sit in the car eating our chips and chatting about our days. We were so close for those few years when it was just us and I always look back on those times with such fondness and feel so grateful that my mum always wanted to spend time with me. There was nothing I loved more than hanging out the three of us. Even if sometimes she was too tired to play with me, I'd bring her cucumber slices for her eyes after promises that after a 15 minute lie down she'd play with me. Secondary school rolled round. I spent most of my time with my best friend Ellie. We'd spend all day at school together, ring each other in the evening when we got home and even write each other letters in the evenings so that we could swap them the next day at school and write back to them. Our weekends were always spent sleeping over at each other's houses. We were constantly together and even used to shower in our bikinis together so we could carry on chatting. It wasn't really until I was around 16 that I had my first proper boyfriend, Sean. We had a great year together until Sean decided to join the army. I wrote to him every single night and we'd talk as much as we could, but distance proved a little bit too much of a strain at such a young age. When my school years came to an end, I felt pressure to go to uni despite not knowing what I really wanted to do. In the end, I just ended up picking something I enjoyed, just so that I could go to uni. Probably not the wisest idea, considering the amount of debt I got into. I visited Bath Uni with my friend Frankie and instantly fell in love with the whole city. My decision was made. Frankie and I moved up together, nervous and excited about what the next three years would bring. I absolutely adored living in Bath. Some of my best memories are from the four years that I lived there. Parties, sleepovers, meeting a brilliant new friend Laura, university campus, staying up all night and playing shot kaplunk and not caring about going to the supermarket in my pyjamas. 
having long lions and movie days and drunken summer picnics. Bonfire nights are always among my favourite memories from Bath. Our little group would always head up to the weir, all bundled up in our hats with hot chocolates, to watch the fireworks together. I still adore the little cobbled streets, boutique shops and the fact that you always bump into someone you know. It's such a beautiful place and it will always hold a special place in my heart, a time where everything was carefree. During my second year at uni, everything in my whole world flipped upside down and it's something I've had to live with every single day since. My mum began to get really poorly and just before my 21st birthday, she had to have an emergency operation. I rushed down to Devon from uni to see her in intensive care, absolutely terrified and not knowing what to expect. The surgeon telling us at her bedside that they'd found bowel cancer is still to this day so vivid in my mind. The future seemed really fragile and uncertain. My sister, mum and I became really close over these next few months. Mum never told us how serious it was and I think that's because she didn't want us to stop our own lives and treat her differently. Looking back, I can completely understand why she did that. I remember she started putting things on credit, like a little Lambretta and sidecar, a new sofa and lots of shopping. My sister and I were like, Mum, what are you doing? Don't get into debt. My mum began to feel worse and worse and none of her drugs were working. Her body started becoming distorted and she didn't look like mum anymore. The doctors told us there was nothing more they could do for her but control the pain. I truly believe that there is nothing more painful than watching the person you love the most in the whole world deteriorate so quickly and knowing that you have to say goodbye. It was all so surreal at the time and I felt like it wasn't happening to me. I felt like I was looking down on someone else's life and it couldn't possibly be mine. After mum died, I felt this huge sense of relief. The suffering and waiting was over. Although my mum's death has caused me a great deal of sadness and pain, I believe that it has changed me in so many ways and built me into a much stronger, better person and ironically a happier person. As I grow older and experience more, I appreciate the things she did for me and all the sacrifices she made. I really wish I could tell her that now, as an adult, not as a child or a student. And more than anything, I wish she was around to meet her first grandchild. I had no choice but to grow up super quickly. I didn't have a family to go back to, an inheritance or any relatives, it was just me and my sister. I was in a really dark place and felt extremely alone and lost for a long time. My friends had moved back to their family homes and I felt really angry at everybody for not consciously realising how lucky they were to have families and homes to go back to and parents to support them. It didn't help that I was so fed up scrimping and saving and that I never had any money to do anything or treat myself. On top of everything else, I didn't really know what kind of direction I wanted to go with my degree, so I started a beauty blog as a little hobby. I was so poor at the time, I didn't even have the internet, so a little beauty spot was born in a cute little cafe in Bath called Jika Jika, still one of my favourites to this day. I think I had the same cup of coffee for hours while I was setting up my blog. I had no idea what a big part of my life it was going to become for the next few years, all the lovely friends I'd make and the support I'd receive. After about a year, I'd finally saved up enough money to move up to London with my boyfriend at the time, Ben, and my best friend from uni, Laura, who had already moved up. Eventually, I found a job as a receptionist in Covent Garden, and from this point on, things really started to get much better for me. The girls I worked with became like a kind of surrogate family to me in a way. One day, I saw a post on Facebook that Heat magazine were looking for interns for the beauty desk. I applied, not thinking anything would actually happen. Then one morning, a few days later, I received an email from Heat saying they needed someone for a week. I was still wondering what on earth to do with my life. All I knew was that I liked writing about makeup and this sounded like the perfect stepping stone. Although the placement wasn't what I was expecting at all, it was at this work placement I met my future husband, Stefan. There were no seats free on the beauty desk that week, so I had to sit on the digital desk and plonked myself down in a seat right opposite Stefan and he kept offering to make me tea even though I was the intern and probably supposed to do it. A few days later I got a message on Twitter from him saying I think it's your turn to make the tea and it all started from there. We started chatting regularly and we were really getting on so we decided to meet up for this tea that I owed him. I actually cancelled on him three times before we actually went on our first date. Whoops. I remember meeting him after work and he was so nervous. 
I was only going to stay for one or two drinks and I already had my excuse planned. But we ended up getting on so well and chatting all night like we'd known each other all our lives. Pretty much from then on we were inseparable and the past couple of years have been a total whirlwind for us. In so many ways I think Stefan has saved me. He made me see that life could be fun again, explored with me and made me see humour in darkness. He taught me a different way to look at things that happen in life. I never felt so deeply connected on so many levels to another person. We really understand each other and he's my best friend. I know there's no one else in the world I'd rather be with. I've had the best years of my whole life with him and I feel so lucky to have found someone like him. And really, who could resist his beautiful ginger beard? The first proper trip we took together was to a beautiful English countryside hotel called Stoke Park. It was the most luxurious hotel room either of us had ever stayed in and literally felt like we were staying in the Queen's room. Our next trip was a long weekend in a very snowy Prague. It was absolutely stunning. We dipped in and out of cafes for hot chocolates, went out drinking and even visited a torture museum. In the summer, I felt like the luckiest girl in the world after Steph told me he was taking me to the Bahamas. We drank cocktails on the beach, canoed in the sea, had dinner at fish fry, swam with sharks and stingrays and made friends with a crazy local man named Perry. As soon as we got back from the Bahamas, we moved in together and things just kept getting better between us. A couple of months later, Steph surprised me with another Stoke Park trip. He picked me up on a random work night and told me he'd asked my manager to have the next day off. We arrived on the big majestic driveway and this time it was so Christmassy and it felt really magical. We had some champagne in our room and then that evening at dinner, Stefan asked me to be his wife. I was so happy that I cried. Our next adventure together was Venice and would you believe it, it actually flooded while we were there. We took gondola trips, spent our evenings getting lost down the endless winding streets on bar crawls, ordered Italian lunches with no idea what they were. In between holidays, Steph was an absolute sweetheart and paid for me to do a makeup artist course. He knew it was what I was really interested in. I started getting experience and doing jobs and shoots for music videos and adverts, all very exciting, fun and glamorous, but bloody hard work. I loved it though. After realizing how stressful planning a wedding was, we decided to be a little crazy and elope to Vegas to get married in a little chapel. Before we went, we paid a little visit to Steph's family in Ireland the week before. We got to Rainy Island and stayed in a little cottage by the sea. I had a little niggling feeling that I needed to do a pregnancy test before we flew out to Vegas the next week. I disappeared into the bathroom and just as I thought, two very distinct red lines popped up. I frantically waved through the bedroom door for Steph to come in and told him the big news. We both stared at the test for about 20 minutes and we even reread the instructions over and over again. We just couldn't believe that it was positive. We were in such shock and over the moon. We flew out to Vegas and married each other one night in a little white chapel, celebrating with rooftop parties, dinner by the Bellagio fountains and a tour of the Grand Canyon in a helicopter. It was truly a crazy experience. For our honeymoon, we took a trip to Santa Barbara and LA. Back in England, I began to vlog my pregnancy on YouTube. As I couldn't ask my mum for pregnancy and baby advice, I'd turn to other bloggers and YouTubers. They really helped me know what to expect and were so lovely and supportive. So I began vlogging in the hopes that I might in return help somebody else one day. The amount of people who have watched and been supportive has really blown me away and I feel so grateful to have met and spoken to so many lovely people. Although there are parts of my life that bring me extreme sadness, they've all led me down a path to where I am today, the happiest I have ever been. I love London life, living close and getting closer to my sister and having support from my best friend, Laura. Going through the pain of my mum's death at an early age and having to grow up independently on my own super fast has really shaped me not only into a more of an appreciative person, but also a better person. I'll always carry the darkness of that time with me, but I use it to highlight the good things going on in my life. It makes moments and people so much more special to me because I've seen how delicate life can be. I really can't wait to see what the future brings for Stefan and I raising our new little family. I'm really looking forward to this next chapter of my life as a wife and mummy. Naturally, we are very nervous about what's around the corner, but that's life, I guess. All I know is that right now, having our own little family means more to me than I can ever put into words. Thanks for watching.